This is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference Extra, a special segment of today in LA Weekend. State Senator Holly Mitchell is chair of the powerful Senate Budget Committee in Sacramento. She's now a candidate for the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, District 2, representing about 2 million people from Inglewood to Culver City to Lenox to downtown LA. Thank yes. you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, we've had uh, one of your opponent, Herb Wesson, on earlier. Jan Perry will be on next week, among the other opponents you have in this race. First question is the easiest one. What distinguishes your candidacy from theirs? Mm -hmm. I appreciate that question. You know, I view myself really as the populist candidate. I can't call myself an outsider having been in the state legislature for now 10 years and endorsed by uh, Governor Newsom and Governor Brown. But I really think that my candidacy, my vision around policy, my vision for the future of the second district resonates with the people who actually live there. Uh, they want someone who has experience working on the policy areas that the county actually does the work on probation, child welfare services, foster care, mental health, public health. Those are the areas that I've cut my teeth on my entire professional career beyond just being in elected office. And I think my message, the, the work I've done uh, in the legislature resonates with the voters. Now, the Board of Supervisors, $30 billion budget, you deal with a number of different issues that other municipalities don't deal with, certainly health care, the homelessness yes. crisis. Yes. I would assume homelessness and and the cost of living and the cost of housing are fundamental questions Absolutely. that voters have in mind. Absolutely. And I would add to that element mental health, mental health services, as well as, you know, jobs, how to uh, be able to live, work, and recreate in your own community. Well, let's talk about that. There was a bill in the California legislature, fairly controversial, Senate Bill 50, and it would allow the development by, the state would allow the development of, of density housing mm -hmm. along transit lines. Mm -hmm. You have transit lines now through South LA, the Crenshaw line. Absolutely. Now, you voted against it, mm -hmm. despite the fact some have argued that if you're going to build the housing you need for the state, for people who need to work here, you need to just start developing up. You can't build more suburbs. Why did you vote against SB 50? The culture in which uh, SB 50 could even emerge uh, recognizes that we've got to build. But in Los Angeles, we've done a great job in terms of building. The real issue are the municipalities that have not. I voted against it because I also represent a huge community of single-family uh, homeowners who are holding on by their teeth, <laughs> who are not in a position to be able to move or relocate. Uh, and so the issue around SB 50 was, did it really address the critical issue for my constituents, which is housing affordability. If we're going to build up, are they still affordable? And so a number of my colleagues and I from Los Angeles County spoke up against the bill. We are at the table talking about a production uh, bill, but it's got to be something that works for all of our constituencies. And housing affordability wasn't really at the crux of SB 50. That was a problem for me. But to an economist who says we don't have an affordability crisis, we have a housing crisis that results in a lack of affordability, you simply need to build units. Mm -hmm. And and yes, they will be market rate at some point. But if you build enough, then all of a sudden they become affordable. Or do you not believe that? I, I don't. I don't. I don't subscribe to that. We have two issues. We have an economics issue, and when you look at Skid Row that I have the pleasure of representing in uh, on the Senate, um, and the disproportionate number of people of color who are there who simply can't afford the rent, yes, we need to build, and we need to build for all across the spectrum. Residents are concerned about the vacancy rate. In downtown L.A., we have all of this construction, high-end units, multi-story units, a 30-story unit uh, in Culver City on La Cienega. Uh, and the vacancy rate is so high, it's because people can't afford it. And so we really have to have a specific conversation about affordability. Homelessness crisis, is it all about money, spending money on, uh, well, let, let me change that question. Do you handle the homeless crisis by looking at long-term care, or is it a, an emergency right now mm -hmm. and you need emergency shelters? Because there are advocates on both sides mm -hmm. who don't agree. You have to do both. I had the pleasure of leading a Senate delegation to Utah about five or six years ago. Can you do both? To figure out, I believe we can, to figure out how Utah reduced their chronic homeless population by 90 percent. And they did both. We have to decentralize. It can't all be housing and services in one geographic area like our existing Skid Row. We have to build out so people can stay in their own communities close to families and have services there. We have to deal with the affordability issue. We have to deal with the lack of services around mental health as well as substance abuse but we have to do both we have a, a 
emergency on our streets right now with average of three people dying a day and so we have to address the immediate situation okay well along those lines if people are dying on the street let's say they're mentally ill you're asking them to have dominion over their mental illness in order for them to get help should you change the definition of gravely disabled at the state level so that you can get people off the street even if they don't want to the Lantern Petrus Act is over 50 years old. It has to be reevaluated. We've had several bills That's come before me. That's the one that got me. rid of the mental health institutions. And, and said that uh, the individuals had the right um, to determine their own self-determination. Exactly. That's the one that limited the um, um, involuntary holds to 72 hours. And so we have to review the Lantern Petrus Act. Uh, I'm a member of the Senate Health Committee, and we've had several bills where we're beginning to chip away at it. We have to protect inv individual rights, but acknowledge that there are people on the streets who aren't fully aware of their degree of mental illness. And we as a civilized society have to step up to help them. State Senator Holly Mitchell, thank you very much for joining us. It's been my pleasure. I appreciate it. Up next, the race for the Democratic presidential primary election turns to the Nevada caucuses. We talk with Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press, next.